and begin to call peace in your life, wholeness, prosperity, harmony, tranquility, and welfare in your life. Amen. 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 Jesus paid it all. So it's God's desire to grant us peace. It's God's desire to make us whole. Hallelujah. If, if we, if it, it's, we find many references in scripture where God talks about how he is a God of peace. How that he desires peace for us. This type of life is what he wants us to live. A life of shalom, shalom. A life of peace. A life of wholeness and completeness. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says that he, he gives perfect peace. Not just peace. He says perfect peace. He says, perfect peace. That's your portion. You and I. Our portion should be perfect peace. Hallelujah. In the New Testament, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, God is referred to as the God of peace. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. He says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Are we able to show the in, uh, in King James, the King that says completely, right? And in the King James, it says holy, okay? H uh, W H O, not holy, H O L Y. So he is talking about a wholeness, a completeness, all right? So that is what God's desire is for you to sanctify you completely, holy, so that the things in your life that are not whole, God's desire as a God of peace to step in and to make you whole. As we see, as we saw the definition of peace, he's a God of peace, peace. And out of the definitions of peace, we see wholeness. So God says, when I show up in your life, I, I, I'm pronouncing wholeness. I'm pronouncing completeness. I'm pronouncing harmony. I'm pronouncing tranquility. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. That's what he wants to bring in your life. That's what he wants to bring in your life. And Jesus is called the very prince of peace. When his birth was announced in Isaiah 9 verse 6, the Bible tells us he is the prince of peace. He is a prince of peace. So that's why there's no doubt when Jesus himself stands up and calls the worlds and says, peace be still. Because he was a prince of peace. The God of peace. Hallelujah. And that's why he declares in John 14 verse 27, he says, my peace I give to you. My wholeness, my harmony, my tranquility, my uh, 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 harmony, my prosperity, I give to you. Hallelujah. John 14, verse 27. Media, if you can help us. John 14, he says, My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I don't know what's going on in your life. You are watching your, the economy and your heart is troubled. You are watching the doctor's report and your heart is troubled. You are watching the situation in your home. Children gone astray and your heart is troubled. You are watching the strife between you and your siblings and parents and all those things. Things are just not right and your heart is troubled. You are watching your ministry and it's not taking off and things are not just working the way they should and your heart is troubled. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. Why? Because the Prince of Peace is showing up. Because I'm the Prince of Peace and I'm showing up. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but there's the areas in my life where I'm calling and say, Lord my God, I thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. And you have shown up to pronounce and to announce that peace be still in my life. In Jesus' name. And Jesus paid for this peace. He didn't come at he didn't come at, at, at naught or without a price. He paid for it by the breaking of his body. We saw what Isaiah tells us about how much his body was broken. So when you think of the peace that Jesus, for Jesus to release his peace upon our lives, he had to pay for it. He had to pay, purchase the right, in essence, purchase the right to give us his peace. Amen. So it's not a light thing. So don't let the devil steal your peace. Oh, the Bible tells us that he, he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. 
And he wants to steal your peace. He wants your peace. He wants those errors in your life that you're seeking peace to remain unpeaceful, if there's such a word. And, and don't let him steal your joy. Don't let him steal your peace. Don't let him steal your, 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 your finances. The devil's plan and ammo and, and, and goal is to steal your peace. Amen. But don't let him take that which you have a right to because Jesus paid for it. Hallelujah. He paid for it. It's, it's like going into a department store with many different departments, electronics and things like that. When you enter into the life of a believer, it's like a department store. There's healing. There's deliverance. There's finances. There's all those things. And, and he says you can just walk in and by faith take what you need. So it's like when you go into a department store, uh, who can think of, a, think of a huge department store? That's electronics and clothing and all that and food. And as you're going to say, mm, I like that 80 inch. And, the, and one of the security officers be like, no, nah, you can't take that. No, but it's already paid for. God says, go in, everything you need is paid for. Take what you want. And then somebody wants to stop you and says, well, you can't take it. Well, you got to rebuke that. And that's what the enemy will do. You just can't walk up and just, he won't let you just walk up and take even that which is already yours. He's going to want to stop you and says, you can't take this. But it's up to you to say, no, this is mine. This rightfully belongs to me because Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid for it. His body was broken so that I can do this. Visualize how much Jesus' body was broken. And let that anger arise in you. And say, devil, you cannot steal my peace. Hallelujah. You cannot steal that what Jesus already paid for me. I mean, for the sake of Jesus' suffering, we ought to rise up every time the enemy wants to steal something. And say, because my Savior paid such a high price. I will not let you suppress that which is mine. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Don't let, don't let the breaking of Jesus' body go in vain. Don't let the breaking and the suffering of Jesus' body go in vain. Why you tolerate that which the enemy wants to put in your life? Why you tolerate that which the enemy wants to stop in your life? Don't let that. For the sake of what Jesus did, rise up with anger in you and say, this is mine. This belongs to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the enemy wants to rob us of peace in several different areas. He wants to rob us of peace in our relationship with God. You know, Romans 5 verse 1 says, we have peace with God. The enemy wants to take that away to make you feel like God hates you. God doesn't love you. For you to constantly feel like you're not loved by God. He wants, so, so, so that's something you have to fight for. You, the enemy is not just going to let you walk freely in joy, in your, in joy in your relationship with God. His goal is to take away the peace that you have with God. Because he knows that when he takes that away, your prayer life will suffer. Your evangelism will suffer. Your, your ministry will suffer. So many things will suffer if you don't have peace with God. But Romans 5 verse 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. He wants to take peace from our health. He wants to take peace away from our finances. He wants to take peace away in our families to cause strife and unrest in our home. He wants to, us to suffer lack of peace within ourselves, failing to accept ourselves for who God has made us to be, failing to see ourselves in the image of whom God has created us. You are unique and you are special in God's eyes. You are wonderfully and beautifully made. Believe the report of the Lord. The Bible says, who shall believe our report? Well, I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. The arm of the Lord has been revealed to us. So therefore, we believe the report of the Lord. Don't let anyone make you feel like you're less than worthy. That you're less than good enough. That you cannot be loved and appreciated. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy steal your peace as far as your, per your perception of who you are in Christ. He wants to take peace in your career, in your education. He wants to rob you of peace. 
in your ministry, the areas in your life where the enemy is targeting and you know where you are right now. The enemy is robbing you of peace. He's taking peace away from you in certain areas. But I've come to announce, hallelujah, that Jesus paid it all. That Jesus paid for your freedom. Jesus paid for your peace here to, and is here to set us free. Amen. Hallelujah. See, now they see the same places that when you know, that means you can stop the enemy from coming. And now that we know that Jesus paid and that his body was broken for us, now we should stand up and say, devil, you cannot take my peace anymore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Possess that which belongs to you. Jesus speaks peace over your life today. He's declaring, peace be still. He paid for it. Receive it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hello, Agape family, and thanks for joining us. At Agape, our vision is to develop agents of change for Christ, raising a community of believers who impact their world for Christ and present a living Christ to a dying world without compromise. For more teachings and Holy Ghost-filled services, please subscribe, like, comment, and share the video. And remember, you are welcome as you are here at Agape. Be blessed and bye.